morning everyone today we are going to see about the median infracurricular force anatomy and uh, this picture shows the uh, logistics of the uh, of this block you can see that the arm being abducted and you can see the placement of the ultrasound machine and uh, and the person who's going to do the block so this is uh, it is like uh, to know the medial infracurricular force anatomy, we need to know four contiguous positions. First, the uh, linear high frequency probe needs to be put and it has to be kept in a transverse oblique direction. So, first is uh, the level of clavicle, next is that the level of uh, subclavis muscle, and next is that the level of uh, cephalic vein, uh, next we get the level of, uh, uh, level of uh, uh, pectoralis minor or the thoracocranial artery. And, uh, and as we move later, it is the later infracurricular force we get. So this is the clavicle, uh, it's the scanning at the level of clavicle. You can see the probe being kept in the transverse oblique direction. And as we keep the probe, you can see the pectoralis major there, the subclavius muscle there. And you can see the lateral, medial and posterior cord being clustered, clustered lateral to the axillary artery. So this has a consistent relationship uh, to the axillary artery and because of this costoclavicular uh, block is being done and generally uh, it is at the subclavius level that we do the block and here in the picture you can see the serratus anterior muscle uh, uh, getting from the axillary artery and the best region to do the block is uh, placement of the needle between the lateral cord and the posterior cord and the medial cord. Here in this picture, you can uh, see uh, how the cephalic vein e uh, empties itself into the axillary vein. As we go a little bit later, we get the cephalic vein. So it is our uh, motive that we should go a little bit, uh, uh, we should tilt the probe a little bit cephalic so that we can avoid cephalic vein puncture. So we should avoid this. So basically we need to get the first picture where we saw the subclavius muscle and the lateral posterior and the medial cord being clustered there and in this picture you see you see the thoracocranial artery between the axillary vein and the axillary artery and the, and the pectoral branch of the thoracocranial artery there so this as we move the probe laterally we get this picture so uh, so the ideal placement of the probe ideal placement of the probe should be at the level of of uh, subclavis muscle and where the medial lateral and uh, lateral sorry lateral uh, medial and the posterior cord is clustered laterally to the axillary artery so it is there that we uh, do the costoclavicular block and you can always notice that the medial and the posterior cord is always encased in a connective tissue that is why we usually do uh, a single point injection although double uh, injection and triple point injection has been published at uh, a single point injection and double point injection uh, th these are the usual methods which is being followed and uh, usually what we do is we give uh, uh, two, part, uh, two point injection of around 10 to 15 ml here in this video you can see in this picture you can see how the probe is tilted in the sagittal direction and now you can see the lateral medial and the posterior cord in almost a tripod position and ju we just demonstrated this so that you would know the difference between the medial infraclavicular fossa sonatomy and the lateral infraclavicular fossa anatomy so this is how uh, we do the sonatomy thank you